Sabers 2024 just released and we have some very cool tools. We don't have an amazing or huge arsenal of tools, but I want to go over the most important ones that we have in this update. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the knife brushes, the new masking options, some of the noises, as well as the anchor points and transforms. But before we do that, my friends, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to every single one of you. We just hit 5,000 subscribers here on YouTube and it's been amazing. This past couple of months has been a huge experience. There's been ups and downs for me, of course, but I'm really happy with how our community has been growing and all of the amazing comments and reviews that I've been getting. If you want to keep supporting the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're not subscribed and uh, yeah, just be part of this amazing community. Let's go. The first thing that we're going to check is something that actually affects every single brush and that is that we have a new mode. Normally, we only had this mode right here. Now we have this drag stamp mode and this one works particularly well with uh, the vector displacement brushes. It's very simple to use. Let's go here, for instance, to the chisel creature and let's grab this scale right here. And the way this works, usually if we were doing like scales, we would need to try to get them as close as possible to what we wanted when we were dropping them into our character. Now we can actually control this after the fact. So if we change this to drag stamp, the size of the brush is going to like determine, determine, I always struggle with that word, determine or determine. I'm gonna have to look that up, but uh, it's gonna decide how it's gonna, like how big it's gonna be. So if we go for a very big scale and I start dragging it, as you can see right here, I'm gonna be able to pull or push my Wacom or my mouse up and down and generate either, either more intensity or less intensity, depending on how much of an effect I want. Again, remember the size of the brush is gonna decide the initial like size of your alpha. And then this drag that we do right here is gonna allow me to change how intense or not that alpha is being projected. It doesn't only work with this vector displacement brushes. For instance, if I go, oh, let's go to Damien Standard and let's grab like whatever this alpha right here. If we grab our drag stamp, it's going to be the exact same thing. Like we can push it or reduce it very, very nicely. So super, super cool thing. It's a, it's a new one. I've been using Seabrush for 11 years now, and this is the first time that I see a new stroke being added to our brushes. So hopefully you like that one. Next change, and this is actually very, very cool. We've talked about this one before. Let me isolate the character real quick. Let's just do a solo isolation. If you want to move your character, we can now use the anchor brushes. Oh. So in the brushes, we got this anchors right here. By default, it's set to rotate. And now you only click on one point, click on the second one, and then click and drag the second one. And it's automatically going to be rotating your element right there. Super, super powerful. Before or a couple of updates ago, we had to manually mask things out. Now it knows that the first point that you like position is going to be the main like area where you want to like be moving things around. And as you can see, not only is it moving it, it's actually deforming things a little bit. It's not your traditional transpose. This was something else that was on the documentation of the element they changed the way the algorithm does it and it uses a sort of like smooth transition so very very cool especially for like posing fingers for instance right here i can go to the end of the finger and i can move all of the fingers right here or i can go like right there and just move this whole section right there and then click click and then close the finger right there. Of course, there's always going to be a little bit of sculpting that you need to do, but this is a perfectly, perfectly valid way to chain things. We can do the twist. Twist is very, very important. For instance, in arms, arms are always one of those things that are a little bit complicated to twist around. So with this one, we're going to be able to, to modify and twist the general direction of our characters. Very, very handy, these new anchor brushes. Another big change is that they added the Maxon noises. So if you are a fan of using noises to add just a little bit of text, to your characters, you can now go to the noise section all the way down here to the surface section. Sorry, to so the surface right here. We're going to add a noise. This is the preview of the noise. We're going to open the noise plugins or this one right here, the noise plugin. And in the noise plugin, we're going to have the maximum noise right here. And on the maximum noise, we have all of these noises right here that we could use. So, for instance, if you use, I don't know, this Poxo noise right here and hit OK. If we go over here and we change the plugin scale, you're going to start seeing the scale of the maximum noise right there. Once you have the basic noise like this, remember that you can change a couple of things. First, I'm going to reduce the mixed basic noise. I'm going to start increasing the scale of this thing a little bit. Then I'm also going to increase the strength right here so that we can start seeing it. That's, of course, a little bit too much. But look at how when we bring this down, we're going to be able to have this very, very cool sort of like crazy looking skin. Try, try to do that with just alphas and it's going to be a little bit complicated. Here, we can just increase the strength just a tad bit more to make it more intense. There we go. Hit OK. And now if we hit Apply to Mesh, we're going to have this beautiful, beautiful random noise across the whole surface of our character. So 
Another cool thing here in the update. I know it's not like the biggest update, but there are some cool tools. Let's go for some more. Another very cool thing that we have are some options for masking. So imagine we have this object right here and everything is a single polygroup and I don't want to make multiple polygroups, but I want to select at this arrow right here, this plank right here and at the border of the shield. If I just do a quick little selection right there, I can go to grow all and it will automatically select all of the things that I selected. As you can see, of course, I selected some of the planks when I was masking this thing right here, but it selects everything very, very nicely. In the same way, if you create, for instance, a blocky mask like this one and you do grow all, it's going to select everything. But if you do mask a region over here, auto region, it will only try to focus on the one that's like the most filled. And you can even do shrink all to remove all of the mask from the areas that you don't need them. So some, again, powerful masking options here to make sure that you have more control over where you want to sculpt, paint or do whatever here inside of Seabrush. Let's go for one more tool. Another cool tool is here for you hard surface guys. If you are doing any sort of hard surface here instead of ZBrush, I guarantee you're going to be using this quite a bit. So control shift brings us, of course, to the selection menus and the knife brushes. By default, the knife brush has this behavior where you cut through a shape and it removes the part of that shape right there. We can, of course, add symmetry. Let me just get rid of this tool real quick. But now if we press control shift and spacebar, we can select this option called split to parts, which will not delete the part it will be there will be stay there and now if of course if we invert the mask we're going to be able to modify this thing to add more complexity to our objects so for instance here let's scale this in and generate something that's slightly different right there let's say we go to the side view here i'm going to grab now the knife rect brush and let's cut something like that Again, it's now cut. That's a, it's pretty much like using a Boolean, but instead of the deleting the edge or, or losing the whole thing, you just like reutilize or reapply whatever it is you were like using here. There we go. We could even use it for like circular elements. So we can go here to our knife circle. There we go. Let's do some like interesting cuts here on the corners. And that's it. So just scale this down, bring them down. Maybe just kill them in, push them down. And this starts adding a lot more complexity to our object without the need to do live booleans and anything because as we cut, we just like remix and rematch the whole elements. Of course, this can then continue with things like Dynamesh and uh, hard surface modeling and stuff like that. Make sure to check our channel for the Medkit uh, video where I show you how to get to this Medkit right here by using some of the tools inside of Seabrush that are still, of course, usable in this version 2024. And uh, yeah, let's go, I think, for one more final tool. Last but not least, the gizmo and the little transform tool has also been changed. Now, if you press control and click, you will automatically get a nice, like, smooth transition up to that point. Before, we would get this very harsh line. So now it should be a little bit easier to, again, pose the character, move things around, and just generate a slightly, like, nicer effect. If you still want your, like, hard surfacey effect or the, the nice, like, hard transition, you can, of course, again, go to masking and use the sharpen mask option to get a slightly stronger effect but uh, this is very cool because now i can literally just control go to w control and click for instance on the shoulder right there control and drag on the shoulder rather control drag control and drag there we go and I'm going to get a nice little transition there that should allow me to have a better deformation. It's, got, it's trying to emulate the deformation that we would normally get in like a muscle systems and things like that. So you can see that, for instance, the tricep there is actually moving a little bit with the whole mask. Again, I think it's a, it's a nice little addition. So that's it, my friends. Those are the updates to Seabrush 2024. I wouldn't say they're like the most amazing updates ever. You guys know I'm very vocal about my uh, personal opinion about how things have been handled after the departure from Pixelogic. But I mean, it's still a good thing. And if you're already part of the subscription like I am, then you're going to get these tools for free. And it's just a couple of extra nice little elements that you can use for your creations. If you want to learn about ZBrush, we do have a course available, a premium course, where you can check all of the amazing things that ZBrush has to offer from an absolute beginner perspective. If you're also an advanced user or an intermediate user and you want to specialize a little bit more in stylized characters, I believe this course is also helpful for you, my friends. And in this course, you will be doing uh, this character right here, which is, of course, our Oni character. 
You're going to be doing all of the assets, props, and things for this only character. And all of the tools that I just showed you are going to be maybe useful. I don't cover those, those on the premium course, of course, because I recorded it a couple of months ago. But um, all of the other tools that are here instead of Zebras, so that you can get to this result right here, are going to be available for you to check out. That's pretty much it, my friends. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow for our live stream. We're going to be working here inside the Zebras. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the tools, make sure to follow us on Twitch. Check our Discord channel. And um, yeah, just a like, share, or comment. It really helps the channel. And thank you, thank you once again for the 5,000 subscribers. Let's go to 10K now. Bye-bye.